pretty, but in a little bit different perspective than you normally think of it. Um, since 2004, uh, we've applied for federal security funding uh, that we've received from DHS and we've been able to share with their local partners. Uh, but what I'd like to do is kind of explain to you what we've done with that. Uh, port security doesn't stop at the main gate. Uh, it, it goes all the way. It goes all the way out. It's a it's a regional, state, and federal exercise. Uh, it's all about the not the collaboration. Uh, the, sh in the shadow of the September 11th uh, that we just remembered last this past weekend, the 9/11 Commission report basically identified that agencies need to communicate with each other. As a result of that, uh, collaborations have occurred with the U.S. Coast Guard, with the area, with the uh, area Maritime Security Committee, the Domestic Security Oversight Councils. Regional Domestic Security Task Force and a newly created FSTED Seaboard Security Advisory Council, in which the board participates in each one of these, including the Area Maritime, uh, Area Maritime Security Region 7. Again, it should be noted that a lot, a lot of reasons why we want to make sure that we focus on this, at least in Palm Beach County, is that the 9 11 terrorists did live and train in Palm Beach County for a period of time. Most recently, Omar Mateen, the Orlando shooter, was from Palm Beach County as well. He worked down here. Three ISIS, suspected ISIS uh, people were arrested. One while attempting to board an airplane in Miami uh, to go to Syria. The threat is real and it's local. The first layer of protection is 12 miles out. Uh, that layer of protection is the United States Navy. Uh, the Navy patrols the waters 12 miles out. We're a big testing area uh, for the Navy as well. Every once in a while you'll hear about a submarine that pops out of the water a little too close to a fishing boat or to a freighter. Um, that happens once in a while. And also every, almost every day, you'll be able to see Lockheed Martin going out the inlet and some testing equipment that they're also testing for the Navy. So <coughs> things of that nature. Within that three to 12 miles, we have the United States Coast Guard. Uh, they have a Cutters station down in Miami that come up here every once in a while, that come up here frequently as well. Uh, Operation Stone Guard is one of the uh, operations that they have multi agencies uh, where basically Border Patrol, Customs, uh, U.S. Coast Guard, and local law enforcement will team up and actually create a stone, uh, a virtual wall out in the waterway to protect the coastline. Uh, the Coast Guard has primary responsibility for 3 to 12. Then Three, uh, three miles out, you're, you're still in state waters. We have the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and local marine units uh, out there as well. You picked it here is our 38 foot safe boat, as well as one of our 32 uh, foot uh, rigid hulls that were actually purchased uh, with the Port Security Grant Program as well. In addition to that, there's a coastal radar system that is goes from all the way from Palm Beach down to Miami. Uh, this is one that's on top of a, one of the uh, condos across the way in um, Lake Park Shores. Um, and also a video camera that actually has this player camera that can reach up to 20 miles. Here is a result of part of our participation uh, with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, here you'll note that, uh, that the <coughs> Sheriff's boat on the left side of the uh, photo is actually a 32 foot CV that was purchased through the Port Security Grant Program to help protect the port. Uh, actually pulling somebody out of the water uh, and helping save their life. Here in, 2000, in 2015, uh, this again is our safe boats out in the water, uh, as well as the CVs with the Sheriff's Department and actually trying to rescue people that were trying to get to the United States. <coughs> and even though this says in Martin County, uh, this is a Palm Beach County Sheriff's uh, CV also, uh, basically rescuing somebody from the open ocean uh, before they have an opportunity to drown. Here is an example of our sites and sonar. I mean, sometimes uh, we're not able to get there in time. Uh, this site scan sonar was actually purchased through the Port Security Grant Program uh, to basically do sonar testings of our slips to make sure no parasitic devices have been placed. But everything has a residual effect as well. Again, we're using this equipment to prevent, deter, respond, and recover from acts of terror and aggression. But while they're in play, they have local day-to-day -day uses. This is one. This is actually uh, 
Lake Osborne, where an individual was uh, basically went under the water. They couldn't find him because of deep, murky water. Utilizing our SCART site scan sonar, we were able to locate the individual and take him back to his loved ones. Getting closer to home, um, you know, as, as we're taking a broad approach, we're pulling it in and basically showing how it's going to affect us here at the port. Whether you know it or not, when you drove down 11th Street coming into the port, you actually had your license plate. You actually had your license plate red. Uh, that license plate did an NCIC check on you to see if there was an active warrant out for your arrest or a bolo on your vehicle. This is not just for bad guys, okay? Uh, if there's an Amber Alert where a child gets abducted and they need to find that car, these systems will be able to find it. If it's a Silver Alert where uh, one of your loved ones can't find their way home, this type of system will help find them. We've expanded out a little bit. We've also uh, incorpor incorporated with Riviera Beach PD uh, these things. Now, nine times out of 10 when you drive by these, you probably think, oh, they're checking my speed to make sure I'm not speeding. Well, as soon as you go past it, it's reading your license plate as well. So we're able to jockey these around from location to location to assist in, uh, again, assisting the Amber Alerts, Silver Alerts, and finding the bad guys. Theoretically, once we get all these systems connected together, uh, right now the Port of Miami, uh, Port of uh, Everglades, and several other ports are utilizing what's called the command bridge system, which is what we uh, approved several meetings ago. And we're starting to pull all this uh, technology together. And even though, you know, when you're driving down the turn 95 of the turnpike, on the side of the road you see the cameras up there. We also have license plate detection as well. Theoretically, in the future, as soon as we connect all these systems together, somebody could, could commit a crime down in Miami, and that system could follow them all the way up I-95 through each one of the reader systems, getting them on CCTV, as well as reading their license plate, all the way to the front gate of the port, where an arrest can be effected. Riviera Beach has done a phenomenal job in their technology department as well. They were recently recognized on the national level for their uh, for their shot spotter systems as well as their uh, remote systems for LPRs and things of that nature. Chief Williams, Chief Williams and the council should be commended for that for sure. Uh, we've also been able to help them in relation to their shot spotter system. We've placed, we've placed several of these systems around the port. Uh, one on Southgate, one on our maintenance shop, one on Merchants Export. These systems can go for one square mile. So it's not just going to cover the port, it's going to cover our surrounding areas as well, including our neighborhoods to our, to our west. If a shot was fired in the neighborhood, these systems would be able to dire uh, direct local law enforcement to the exact location in a timely fashion to either effect an arrest or help somebody that's in need. It's an amazing system. Port Command Bridge, it's all about collaboration. We've got to be able to talk to each other. We're communicating with the Fusion Center, uh, Palm, uh, Palm Beach County Fusion Center, which also communicates with the Fusion Center in Tallahassee. And Tallahassee has a direct line to Washington. Can man? Absolutely. The Command Bridge, I do recall, probably late last year, April of December, January, we approved that. Correct. Is it up and running yet? Yes, sir. And <coughs> what systems were tied together? How is that you? We actually have our access control system uh, connected to it, as well as our CCTV system, which basically allows lo local law enforcement to be able to pull into it. We have we have our access system in our CCTV. Riviera Beach uh, PD has that system in place as well. They incorporate their shot spotter system. They incorporate their uh, uh, camera systems throughout the city. And then that system goes to the com uh, command bridge system at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office which is actually working to pull in the airport, the courthouse, Gardens Mall, Wellington Mall, all these, all those areas uh, throughout the county in one centralized location for an emergency response should something occur in any of the, any one of those locations. We'll have all that data in, in the Fusion Center to be able to provide it to the responding officer. We also share uh, information with Customs and Border Protection. Uh, there are our biggest supporters. 
this is down in our customs immigration area for clearance. We received an email from Jennifer Connors, uh, our CBP port director. Jennifer is, an, is kind of in an amazement of what we do here. Um, she was having a uh, meeting with the chief of Border Patrol for the entire United States, the guy that does you know, Canada, uh, Mexico, things of that nature. And the biggest comment here is the partnership between U.S. Customs and Border Protection and other federal agency, Port of Palm Beach, Riviera Beach PD, and Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office has been a huge success and is recognized throughout CBP as the way things should be in other ports throughout the United States. We also, again, we're basically able to feed live uh, CCTV to the county, or to the city, to the county, to the state, to the Pentagon if we need to. We also have biometric readers. Uh, these biometric readers are also shared with, with uh, Riviera Beach PD, where basically an individual on the street, uh, if they're deceased or a suspect in some kind of case, could actually have their fingerprint scanned and run through the uh, National Crime Bureau as well as the Florida uh, State Crime Bureau. Also that, I'm sorry, also that system's connected to the uh, uh, TSA do not, uh, no fly list as well as the do not permit list uh, for international seaports and it updates daily. Local Connect, again, live feeds, uh, this is recorded by live feed, feeds throughout our CCTV systems throughout the entire port. And then, again, they can be accessed remotely by Customs and Border Protection, Coast Guard, and local law enforcement all the way up to the state. Connectivity, again, Command Bridge goes from, from us, Riviera Beach PD, PBSO. It is hoped that in the future, uh, we are working with uh, Port Everglades, Port of Miami, our, our partners, uh, seaports where we'll soon be able to feed this information up to FDLE and basically do a statewide collaboration to prevent future response. Drills and exercises, we do it all the time. We're gonna have a wonderful opportunity with the MLB. Uh, should that building be determined that it's coming down, uh, we're gonna have local SWAT teams going through it there on a regular basis as well as with our federal partners. Everybody's gonna want an opportunity to train. It's prepare for the worst, hope for the best, and these guys are the best, and they can be prepared. They are definitely prepared for the worst. We train for hazardous materials, uh, spills, uh, as well as bomb squad stuff, and we're prepared for almost anything. We prepare for local fires, uh, shipboard as, as well, and we prepare for the absolute worst, which is a nuclear situation. Uh, we work with the uh, uh, Army, Army, United States Army uh, uh, Reserves, for nuclear response as well. Our security officers port facility are trained in port facility security standards, which is the uh, Coast Guard requirement for my position. But if somebody drops a container on me or runs me over with a strad, we have uh, 30, 30 officers trained my level. Sun State security officers are trained to TSA standards. We've actually had TSA come out to the port, work alongside with our screeners, and they were very impressed with our operation. We learned some stuff from them, and believe it or not, they learned some stuff from us. This is an example of the performance, September 13th, a couple days ago. Uh, basically, a uh, sheriff's officer uh, was going on the Bahamas celebration, had his firearm in his suitcase. Um, we were able to identify it and address it with, with the officer. We, it was not a Palm Beach County Sheriff's Officer, <laughs> outside of the county. Uh, then on the very same day, with the very same officer, found another weapon in, in, a, in a bag as well. This was a concealed weapons holder out of North Carolina. 